many Figma users have experience working in Sketch. If you have designs that you've started in Sketch and would like to finish them in Figma, we'll show you how to pick up where you left off, as well as some of the similarities and differences between the two design tools. This will help give you an idea of what you can expect. Perhaps one of the most important differences is that Figma works on Mac OS, Windows, and even Linux. You can use Figma right in your web browser or download the desktop app for Mac OS or Windows. To get started, let's head to figma.com forward slash downloads, which is Figma's downloads page to get started. Let's quickly talk about a few things on this page. If you're going to use Figma entirely in your browser and you'd like to access the local fonts on your computer, you'll need to install the font installer. There's options for both Windows and Mac OS. Installing this will allow Figma to recognize your local fonts so that when you're designing in the tool, your fonts will appear in the typeface selection menu. Also, on the downloads page, you'll notice that Figma has a live device preview app that you can download on both iOS and Android. Sketch doesn't currently offer this feature for Android, but if you're running Android 7 or higher on your mobile device, you can download Figma's mirror app from the Play Store. I've already downloaded the desktop app, so let's open up Figma and take a look. When you open the app, you're taken right into the recent section of the file browser. There are a few preloaded files, you can keep them or delete them. However, they are fully editable, so you may want to keep them around. You can copy elements from these files and use them in other designs you're working on. In the file browser, you can double click on the thumbnails to open each file. There's also a menu that you can open for each file for quickly sharing, renaming, or duplicating without needing to open the file at all. Now, if we wanted to create a new file, there's a couple of ways we could do that. We could head to the menu icon in the top left and select new file, or we could select the plus icon directly. We could even click the plus new file from our recent files. If you'd like to import an existing sketch file, we can do so by clicking on the import file icon from the top left and selecting our file and locating the file on your machine to import. However, the quickest way to import is to simply drop your sketch file into the file browser. I have a sketch file on my desktop, so I'll start this way. Depending on the size of your file, it may take a few seconds. Our file has finished importing, so I'm going to select Done. Let's take a look inside of our file and see some of the features in Figma. Now we're in the editor. If you've worked in Sketch, Illustrator, or most other design tools, this should look relatively familiar. Here we have the canvas in the middle, a layers panel to the left, a toolbar up top, and a properties panel to the right. Figma has imported things successfully, which brings us to another difference between Sketch and Figma. Some differences in terminology. Artboards in Figma are called frames, and symbols are called components. In Sketch, you can draw a new artboard with the A keyboard shortcut. That same shortcut works in Figma, in addition to using the F shortcut for a frame. Either one will work. Regardless of which shortcut you choose, you'll see that as you type F or A, the Properties panel will update. You can click and choose a preset device layout and even change the orientation. You can also just click and drag out a frame to get started if you don't need a preset size. If you commonly work using a grid system, with the frame selected, click the plus icon in the Properties panel next to the Layout Grid to begin formatting your frame. Click the Grid icon to open up the menu where you can adjust your grids. If you need vertical and horizontal grids, simply click the plus icon again to add another. In Sketch you have symbols, and in Figma they're called components. Let's go ahead and create a simple component so you can see these in action. I'm going to use the R shortcut and drag out a rectangle on the canvas. Now I'll go to the Fill section in the Properties panel and change the fill color. Now I'll select the Shape and click the Component icon in the toolbar. Although you could also use the shortcut Option, Command, and K to turn this into a component. Now 
I'll use the option click and drag to create an instance of this master component. Now I have a component and its instance. When I change the color of the master, the instance will also update. Figma also offers powerful overrides and the ability to select multiple instances and swap out their master components. For more information on using components in Figma, check out our components video. Another big differentiator between Sketch and Figma is Figma's Team Libraries feature. You'll first need to upgrade to a professional team. You can read more about that on Figma's pricing page. But for those working in a team setting, this allows you to share components across files inside the team. Here's how it works. I'm going to select the master component that I previously created. Over in the Properties panel, I'll select Add to Library. If your file is already part of a team project, this will bring up the Team Library window. If not, you'll be given a dialog to move this file to a professional team project. I can select Move to Team, and let's create a new project under our team. With our project selected, we can select Move. Now that our file is within a team project, we have access to the Team Library window. Your component will always live in the file it was originally created, but when you publish your changes, you're also adding this component to the shared library of components that anyone who is a member of the team has access to. Just to reiterate, the original component does not live in the library itself. It lives in the file in which it was created. However, a copy of it is in the library. Now, if you have a colleague working on another file in your team space and they need to use a component they know already exists, they can click the Team Library icon in the toolbar, locate the component, or use the search feature in the library window if they know the component's name. They can then double click or drag the instance of the master component onto the file. If at any time changes are made to the master component in the original file, and those changes are published into the library, anyone working in a file that uses an instance of that component will receive a notification that they have changes to review. They can accept those changes or not. Sharing components across team files is incredibly powerful. Some other key differences between Figma and Sketch are all of Figma's collaboration features. First, we have multiplayer. In Figma, multiple people can work inside of a file at the same time. If you're in a multiplayer scenario, you'll see the avatars for each person inside the file. You can also see their cursors moving around as well. If this gets too noisy, you can turn off multiplayer cursors in the view settings in the top right corner of the toolbar. Next, we have commenting. Your teammates can add and resolve comments on files. You can use this feature to discuss changes in real time. Commenting on files is even available for teammates with restricted view-only access. To learn more about collaboration and file sharing, check out the Sharing Files video. Next, we have Developer Handoff. Sometimes you don't need everyone on your team to have full edit access to your design files. When you invite someone to your team as a viewer, or if you share a specific file with someone as view only, they have access to the Layers panel, which they're unable to edit, and the Code mode in the Properties panel. This is great for developers who need quick access to layer names, redline distances, as well as CSS, Swift code, and XML for Android. These are just a few ways that Figma helps facilitate the growing collaborative nature of Teams. If you're a seasoned Sketch user, you're probably also paying for a prototyping tool like Envision, or at least a plugin or two. Figma has prototyping built in. Create your designs in the Design tab of the Properties panel, and when you're ready, create interactive prototypes linking frames to frames or frames to selected hotspots in the Prototype tab. Presenting your file is as easy as clicking the play button in the top right. Your file will open in a presentation view in a new window, and you can use your computer's arrow keys to navigate through your prototype. For more information on prototyping and developer handoff, be sure to check out those specific videos. Figma offers a lot of new and exciting features for Sketch users, and with the ease of importing your Sketch files, it's easy to pick up where you left off.